Hi, I'm Will, and welcome to Superhero Sunday on the Movie Files. All right, so Captain America Civil War was just released, and it's a good movie. It's a great movie. It's a wonderful movie. If you haven't seen it yet, go see it. I do have a review for it, a non-spoiler review, and I will be doing later on a comic book to film comparison between Civil War and the movie. But for right now, today, on this Superhero Sunday, I want to talk to you a little bit about the history of Captain America in movies and in film. Now, the current Captain America series with uh, Chris Evans is not the first time Captain America has ever been in movies or in film. Captain America on film dates back all the way to 1944 when the character was first used in a 15-chapter serial called Captain America and then later released as The Return of Captain America. But they're the same movie. The 1944 Captain America serial was actually very far removed from the Captain America comics at the time. Now, this was made in 1944, so World War II is still very much ongoing, and the character had yet to be frozen in time and, uh, and thought out in the modern era, which at the time in Avengers No. 4 was the 1960s, but that always gets pushed back and pushed back to whatever the modern era is. But even in... Uh, the, even in the serial, uh, it really is Captain America kind of in name only. Captain America wears the Captain America costume, but he has no shield. Uh, he uses a gun whenever he deems it necessary. And he's not Steve Rogers. Uh, he's not a soldier. He's not even a super soldier. He's a, a district attorney. And, uh, and the district attorney is working alongside his uh, his secretary, Gail, uh, to fight crime alongside the police. Now, as far as uh, old movie serials go, Captain America was a, was a really good one. It really is. Uh, it's exciting. It's engaging. If you can get past that it's not at all the source material and that it really is just Captain America in name only, it really is a very good serial. Uh, these things are very long. They start out usually with a 20-minute chapter followed by 14, 15-minute chapters. So the whole thing, when you watch the whole thing together, it's like three, three and a half hours long. But if you like old serials, if you like old adventure serials, it really is very much worth watching. I definitely recommend that you give Captain America a try. Just acknowledge, just understand that it's not the comic, it's not the source material, but it is a very good representation of what a alternate version of Captain America might be. Now after Captain America, 30 years later, 35 years later, 35 years after the 1944 serial, another actor named Reb Brown stepped into the pirate boots of Captain America in uh, two made-for-television movies that were meant to be and intended to be uh, pilots for a television series. Now this television series never materialized, instead we just end up with these two made for television movies, but this was all done to capitalize on the success of The Incredible Hulk on television. Marvel also did The Amazing Spider-Man television series and several other uh, attempts at recreating television magic, none of which really seemed to materialize. Captain America and its sequel Captain America 2, Death Too Soon, are really, um, they almost seem like they're meant to be spiritual sequels to the 1944 serial. Instead of Captain America being frozen and thought out in the modern era, the current Captain America, who is called Steve Rogers for the first time in any Captain America film project, uh, Steve Rogers is actually the son of the original Captain America, who presumably fought during World War II. Now, 
you could theoretically in your own head canon you could say well uh grant gardner who was the uh the district attorney in the serials and who was the secret identity of captain america could very possibly be the father of steve rogers i mean you'd have to come up with your own head canon explanation as to why they have different last names but it really does seem like that was what they were going for or at the very least that's how it could work out now both of these movies are very much a product of their time they're made in the 70s they're meant to capitalize on the success of the incredible hulk starring lou ferrigno and bill bixby and they're very much done in that kind of style while being captain america and not the hulk they're by no means great movies but they're really not horrible movies either they're definitely worth watching if you're a die-hard captain america fan if you're not a die-hard captain america fan or if you don't watch a lot of old movies you're going to look at these and be like this is crap and you're not going to be wrong but again it's very much a product of its time so if you like movies from the 70s this definitely is captain america from the 70s after captain america and captain america death too soon in 1990 it was planned to do another Captain America movie, but this time they stayed much closer to the actual source material, and, uh, and Captain America was Steve Rogers, a uh, young man with, in the movie it's Polio, who is given the super soldier serum to become Captain America. The 1990 Captain America movie actually didn't see release until 1993. It stars uh, Matt Salinger, who is the son of Catcher in the Rye author, J.D. Salinger as Captain America and again this is the first uh, attempt at really doing the source material. We first meet Steve Rogers, he has polio, he is given the super soldier serum and sent to go fight in World War II against the Red Skull. Now the Red Skull is changed a little bit differently from the comics. He's still a Nazi agent but he's from Mussolini's Italy and not Nazi Germany. But if you get past that, the Red Skull is actually probably one of the best things about this movie. He's very menacing. He's very, um, I mean, they did a, a good job uh, with the, the Red Skull makeup considering the just terrible budget that this movie had. That's, that is probably the biggest failing that this movie had, much like... Uh, Superman 4, I think that there were much greater ideas for this movie and plans for this movie that just didn't bear out because of the, the just limited resources that they had to make it. Now, one of the biggest criticisms about this movie is that Captain America has rubber ears on the side of his mask. If you know anything about Captain America from the comics, historically, he's had cutouts in his mask that his ears fit into. And you can see his ears sticking out from his mask the movie chose to do it with rubber ears and i don't know why they did that i don't know why they didn't just cut holes in the side of the mask for the character's ears for the actor's ears to fit through but they didn't they decided to go with you know just having them being integrated into the mask and really to be honest i think the criticism of the rubber ears is a little unfair because you really don't notice it unless it's you know an extreme close-up on the side of Captain America's head, which you really don't get a whole lot of. Uh, they did do a really good job of making the ears look relatively realistic for being rubber ears. Um, the costume is almost verbatim, the comic book, which doesn't really work. You know, the, the newer movies, the inspired by look is very much uh, more consistent with... Um, you know the film media it makes the costume look better while still maintaining of uh, uh, fidelity to the source material uh, Captain America when I first saw this I was 13 and at the time I watched the movie and I was like this is crap this is horrible this is the worst movie I've ever seen uh, and my biggest complaint was that he's only Captain America twice once at the beginning and once at the end and while that's true Watching the movie later in my adult life, I begin to see, well, yeah, he is only Captain America twice, but he's Captain America for almost the whole first act and the, almost the whole second or third act. It's really only the second act where he's out of costume. So for two-thirds of the movie, 
he is in costume in some form or another. Now, Captain America, the 1990 film, is by no means a good movie. But again, if you are a fan of Captain America, if you're a diehard Captain America fan, it is definitely worth watching. And when you take it into some of the other late 80s, early 90s made-for-TV movies that were made, it's really not any worse quality than that. It just did what it could with the resources that it had. Now, somewhere out there, the director, Albert Pyun, actually does have a director's cut. Now, whether or not this director's cut will ever see the light of day and whether or not it makes the movie better, nobody will ever know because I, I seriously doubt that it's ever going to be released in any sort of official capacity. Um, now, I do believe that Albert Pyun does sell them, uh, or at least he was at one point. I haven't seen it, so... If you've seen it, and if it is better or worse or the same, just leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know. All right, so that's the history of Captain America in film, leading up to 2011 with Captain America the First Avenger, and everything you know that's come since then leading up to now, Captain America Civil War. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it very informative. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Hi everyone. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and make sure you head on over to The Blaze and check out my weekly column where I do movie reviews and general Hollywood industry commentary. You can find the links for all those things in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.